So I've been a friend of Myron Sukumaran, one of the two men, Australian men on death row in Bali, since I was 16 years old. Everyone who knows him is absolutely devastated by what is about to happen. I have a statement that I'd like to read, which Mayu has sent through his brother. This is what he says. I acknowledge more than anyone that I've made mistakes and that I'm not a perfect person. But I've learned a lot in prison and I'm grateful to the Indonesian justice system and to the prison guards for allowing me to achieve all that I have for myself and for the other prisoners, which I've witnessed, that's not in his statement. Andrew and I are not the same people we were 10 years ago, but who is really? We did commit a serious crime and deserve punishment, but we have also paid a great deal for our crimes, as have our families. Please allow us to stay in prison and live. Sorry. Our, our families should not, should not have to suffer more. Our family should not have to suffer more for our mistakes. And I'm just a friend. My question for the panel is this. Why kill the rehabilitated? What? Why kill the rehabilitated? Why kill the person who is a positive influence on those around them? A person who is doing good? Why kill my friend, Mayu? Thank you. Bravely done. Um, Corinne, I'd like to start with you. I just think it's a travesty that the death penalty exists anywhere in the world. I just do not agree with killing people as a punishment for anything. And, and these two guys, they have rehabilitated themselves and they have done really extraordinary work in that prison as well, helping other prisoners who are in there, especially my, with his, um, his artwork and that kind of thing. And I think we are destroying two lives who had a lot to give. I know they did bad things in the past, but they had a lot to give. It just seems like a terrible waste. And it doesn't deter anyone from smuggling drugs anyway, so it's bloody pointless. Absolutely barbaric. And uh, if, we had, if we had a death penalty here, Lindy Chamberlain would be dead. Mm -hmm. And she was innocent. I, I find it just incomprehensible that these people can't yield to pleas for clemency. They will say, oh, well, it's our system. Well, it might be, but they're our people. And uh, to think that you're going to you justify punishment by murder, statutory murder, means, quite frankly, that the barbarians are at the gate. And someone has to get on the phone to this bloke, but Wododo, and simply say, well, you do what you like, but we gave you a billion dollars when you were hit by the tsunami. <laughs> we gave you a billion dollars. At every turn, we tried to assist you people. But remember one thing. There is that poor man, Mr Rush, in Townsville, most probably watching this program. And he thought his son was going to head to Bali. He didn't know anything about it. So he went to the federal police and he said, my boy is up to something. Can you stop him from going? Instead of preventing these people from going, they gave all the information to the Indonesian police and virtually said to them, do with them what you will. Well, this is what they're going to do now. The argument was, oh, well, we'll catch them all and we'll find who the big boys are. Well, they found none of the big boys because, as Mayan has said, Sukumaran, I cannot speak because they'll kill my family. That's why he can't tell you who the big boys are. So what have we got in return for the noble behaviour of the federal police to dead Australian. Australians? It's a shame on the Indonesian system, but a pronounced shame on the federal police system. These young men could be role models for rehabilitation. They could be, they could be educators. Um, of what not to do and how uh, not to make mistakes early in your life because they've rehabilitated ourselves. It is stomach churning. It is terrible. Uh, both sides of parliament are united. The government's doing what they can and with our support. Um, hope is slim, but where there is life, there is hope. Uh, but hope is slim. We have to be realistic about it. All we can do is agree with you and send our thoughts and our prayers for what is a terrible, terrible situation where human life uh, appears to be about to be taken from these two young men. Both sides of politics, uh, absolutely in agreement on. Um, the Prime Minister has spoken uh, to the Indonesian government. The Foreign Minister continues to speak to the Indonesian government. Um, ultimately, they're a sovereign country uh, and we respect our sovereignty. Uh, um, we have to respect theirs. Um, we don't at all agree with the barbaric act that they are 
uh, considering uh, undertaking as punishment. Um, Corinne's right, um, the death penalty exists in certain states in the United States, uh, United States of America for murder, but murders still happen. Um, it doesn't act as a deterrent. Uh, and we, you know, uh, will continue to pressure uh, through the Prime Minister and, and, and Julie Bishop uh, as much as we possibly can till the very last moment to try and overturn uh, what is a barbaric punishment. My question is also, it, it, it's also that what we and a lot, of, a lot of people that I talk to feel, I know that it may not have complete support, but this is what I feel, that if the previous government acted swiftly you know, we were thinking policy-wise, if they acted so swiftly to ban live exports to Indonesia, when it was a, a significant trading partner then as well, and it was on a principle of animal rights, why, why, why aren't we doing more when here this is a principle of human rights? Australia is, uh, sponsored and voted in the United Nations resolution against um, the death penalty. Well, I think the point that the questioner has made is very, very valid. Uh, when it came to animal rights, we were indignant and jumping up and down and, and issuing all sorts of platitudinous comments, these are human rights. And yes, if you're talking about sanctions, let's be honest, yeah, well, why not? Someone's got to do some tough talking. This can't go on. And we should speak on behalf, not of just of the Australians, but of every person who's there. We're not just fighting for these two people. The notion, this barbaric, barbaric notion that you murder people because the statute says so has got to be addressed. It's a major international issue. OK, uh, Heather, we've got just a moment to go to you. And well, the question has been raised as one of yeah, sanctions, yeah. as a way of Look, I think ratcheting I up pressure. I, I think I agree with everybody. I think institutionalised killing is barbaric, it's chilling, it's horrible, um, and, and, it, and but there's not a lot we can do about it. Now, the government can put sanctions against Indonesia. I think that would be impossible, possible thing to achieve. And so I don't think that's going to happen. And I feel very sorry for you and for your, and their families. Um, it is just hideous. Um, but I, I, think, I think the government... The government would have been working much harder behind the scenes than any of us know. And I know that for a fact. I've been to Indonesia very many times. The relationships are pretty good with Australia and Indonesia. So because of the fact we give things like a billion dollars in aid. So we're good friends as countries. And so I think the government would have been trying everything they could have in, in, that, in that way.